Okay. It should be going on. So, say exciting stuff, guys, about the demo. I get your back. Hello! Hello! Okay. Rack. Raccon 2012 Day 3? I'm sorry, I lost track. And we're supposed to be doing um, actual writing projects today. Now, hey, yep. Arthur has not turned up as yet, so we don't actually have uh, the yeah, other Arthur. Oh, oh, yes, soft, yes. My well, there's not. My evil twin. <laughs> um, so we don't actually have a full list of what options were. So, in the meantime, how about we brainstorm a blue sky version of what type of story would we like to start writing by now? Well, I will admit it's going to be a Legion story. Okay. But you've also been mm -hmm. um, uh, hinting, threatening that Psychovan the Duck would turn up in the Legion. Who would you like Psychovan to harass? Uh, everyone in the, uh, in the current classic Legion storyline. <laughs> Fair enough, then. <clears throat> now, would he be going around telling people, no, you're doing it wrong? Or would he just be going around trolling people? He, uh, well, he has a plan for this occasion. He's going to, uh, he's the king of dwarf world. Okay. Unless uh, we get some any better ideas. Because, uh, well, <laughs> because, well, the, uh, it occurs to me that Dwarf World is like 1990s internet. Oh, it's the aliens, the dwarfs. I thought you were talking about dwarfs. Oh, the dwarf. <laughs> dwarfs, the dwarfs. Okay. So we're up to LH number 15. <laughs> it's kind of It's kind of slowed to the point where it looks dead. But it's not really. It's only but, sleeping. Uh, Rob and I uh, actually had ideas for it. Rob was uh, going to say, Cynical West defeats the dwarfs by saying, well, uh, you've, our, our plan is already like that, so you might as well not bother. <laughs> uh, but would they believe it? They you'd have around. to use her powers of cynical to actually convince them of this. Well, actually, no, they'd look around and say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think I'll stop. Yeah, somebody else was up writing last night. I just wrote a few sentences. <laughs> oh, cool! Wow, look at that. Video. <laughs> You're on. Terrifying. But good. Everybody will be able to see how much sunburn I've Okay, got. Say, who are you, <laughs> say who you are. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rob Rogers. Rob Rogers. I'm Rob Rogers. <laughs> but I am not Rob Rogers. I am Saxon Brendan. <laughs> and I don't know who I am. <laughs> <clears throat> Just have amnesia today. <laughs> yeah, I kind of Thomas Aquinas, yes. Saint Augustine, yes. Marcus Aurelius, no. <clears throat> Pity, really. Stoic attitude would go well with uh, most superheroes. <laughs> I quite agree. Ah! <laughs> Yes, something for the YouTube crowd. Oh, Ew. oh well, I might as well tell YouTube then that I uh, got this shirt on my travels and it proves how incredibly wrong I can be about writing about a city I've never seen. <laughs> <coughs> what you are about to see is real. The names and likenesses have been changed to protect those who are guilty. And politics and socioeconomic dynamics have been changed as well. <laughs> And that's that. <laughs> Mention of drugs, either as good things or bad things. And um, I've got here no sex, but that includes not just explicit depictions of sex, but also stuff like um, uh, seduction, as I recall, plus a couple of other things which I'm blanking on. So um, all the adult things, either directly or by implication, um, and both in positive and negative formats. Which I think um, there was at least one famous occasion when there was a Spider-Man story which had been deliberately commissioned by the Federal Anti-Drugs Administration, whatever the exact name was, and it was specifically about how bad drugs were and you shouldn't do them, but because the Comics Code forbade mention of drugs in any way, they deliberately went outside the comics code format 
for that particular issue. Um, and this was long before the um, Comics Code started to wane with the, um, in the 1980s when um, you had Alan Moore starting to do uh, Swamp Thing and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I think during the, the 70s that was quite a big deal. Yeah, I think Swamp Thing did originally was on the Comics Code for a while and then all more, but again, that's what Uncle Anton raping someone or something yes. like that. A no unique or unusual methods of concealing weapons shall be shown in this state. Mm, yes. I, I think that would uh, rule out shoot zero out of his butt. <clears throat> Which I just now set up camera. <laughs> He'll be censored out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric tells off that timing boy, urging him to fight crime rather than disrupting the lives of the Aladdin. He then wonders aloud why the Legion harbors useless members like Bat Tiny Boy. A cultism kid suggests that Eric research Bat Tiny Boy. The results are what you'd expect. Loads of sick days, poor grades, a bad driving record, etc. A cultism kid ten, then tells him he's looking at the hole and missing the donut. <laughs> Eric discovers that Bat Tiny Boy's bad luck has had positive effects on everyone around him. While he was sick, his classmates remained unusually healthy, had higher grades, etc. Eric realized the LNH has been unusually lucky in, the, in part because of the bad luck that Bad Timing Boy has endured. He's sopping up all the bad luck. Exactly. I am debating the nice. <laughs> And that that will give her the power to cross over with every imprint in, R, every imprint in RACC and become completely powerful. And so that she's preparing to become the ultimate queen of everything. And at just that moment, Hooded Hoodwin shows up and announces that she's pitting the crossover queen against Kid not appearing in any Beige Midnight story. <laughs> <laughs> Which therefore logically means it cannot be a Beige Midnight story and her power is negated and the Raggies can proceed. There is a variation on that, although it doesn't actually have precedent. Way back when, I think it was around about the time we were planning Cryopathy, Matt Rossi said to me, Kid Not Appearing in any Ritcon Hour story, who is now Kid Not Appearing in any Beige Midnight story, has a brother not appearing in any crossover lads. No, sorry, really hates crossovers lads. <laughs> and I was toying with the idea of him having the ability to just cause people to just drop out of crossovers. Um, no, there was going to be a, a joke during Cry Apathy. All these people will be coming across. No, we've really got to stop with this nonsense. I've got something important going on. And thinks crossovers are a really stupid waste of time, Kid, or whatever his actual name was. We'll go, okay. Okay, let's fix that. And those particular characters simply drop out and you don't see them for the rest of Cryopathy because they're doing something else personal over in, in, the, in the main storyline. So they're all resurrected wearing beige lantern rings. Yes. <coughs> oh, God, that way. Beige lantern rings. <laughs> for beige's night. For beige's night. Yeah, now, this is dreadful because you realise that's another <laughs> thing where we've got internal rolling crossover event crisis. Yes, um, yes I did. <laughs> I think I started like something, um, it was something after Beige Midnight, it was something with Irony Man, but mm -hmm. never actually finished. It was just something. Beige Dawn or something after beige or something. Yeah, I don't know. That beige hangover. <laughs> beige morning after recovery. Now that that would actually be an interesting story where you know several of these characters wake up in bed with each other, look around. What the hell happened last night? <laughs> and thus beige recovery begins. Well it does remind me, let's see. At Marvel they had camera for Will. Okay. Thank you, Will. Much appreciated. Um, in Marvel Comics, after they had the crossover where people were fighting villains they not, uh, normally associate with. Axis of Vengeance. Axis of Vengeance, yes, that's the one I'm thinking of. They did have a post-mortem issue at the Avengers where they simply sat down and summarised things. Um, it was moderately dry, but if you'd actually missed the crossover, um, it, it gave a pertinent summary, which is probably why they don't do things like that anymore, because actually buying all the individual crossover episodes is how the comics companies 
make money, which it strikes do, do me. Do they still pretend that does, do, they, do they still pretend that idea works? I do remember most recently with Grant Morrison's Countdown to Infinite Crisis that it oh, was Oh, I don't billed... think he would like you billing it as Grant Morrison's Countdown to Infinite Crisis. <laughs> Something like that. It was, um, yes, I think you may be right, Grant Morrison wasn't actually involved in the writing of that, but they actually billed um, Countdown to Infinite Crisis as being vitally important, but it was only later that it turned out, oh, sorry, and this is why I'm thinking of Grant Morrison, he actually did an interview, said, no, 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 that particular thing and a couple of other things were not, in fact, absolutely vital to Infinite Crisis itself. Mm -hmm. And a number of internet reviewers and podcasters go, then why didn't you tell us this beforehand? Mm -hmm. And He likes having a job. Yes, that was basically the summary of some of the more level-headed reviewers. <laughs> <clears throat> and that is why... Grant Morrison is actually associated in my mind with Countdown to Infinite Crisis. So I apologise by actually implying that he may have actually written it. Yes. It's simply through bad luck and bad management and more or less bad merchandising that his name is associated with something which he otherwise had nothing to do with, and I acknowledge this. Mia culpa. <laughs> I, I always love that issue of Hitman, where the characters are sitting around in a bar and they're saying, did you ever notice that every summer it seems like some awful thing happens and all the super guys show up and crazy, and then it just all goes back to normal and we're all just doing our thing for the next few months and then next summer it happens again? We should probably use that. <laughs> they had something similar in um, uh, the... Okay, one last video of people desperately <laughs> typing stuff. <laughs> they found me. <laughs> I don't know how, but they found me. Hmm. No one will ever recognize me dressed like dressed in a power knot uh, checkered flag bandana. <laughs> and thus ends another rack thing, whatever this thing is called. <laughs>